This Western Conference NBA win totals edition of the NBA Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. My bookie is doing everything they can to help DGENs only cash big. Use promo code SGP for a fifty percent deposit bonus. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the app store and use promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to fifty dollars. That's thrivefantasy.com promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports betters, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks, including picks from the crew at SGPN. Better Than Vegas. It's like YouTube for sports betting. Check out all their free videos at Better Than Vegas. That's Better Than Vegas. Finally, we're brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports booking, including uh, getting up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Welcome, everyone, to the NBA Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. It's happening, Kramer Dog. Wow, we time traveled. We did. I almost messed that up because my brain is so programmed yeah. to say welcome to the Sports Gambling Podcast. Of course, we're doing a crossover episode on the NBA Gambling Podcast feed. Joining us from the NBA Gambling Podcast, this is his podcast. <laughs> Ryan, Rich Fat Baby McKee. What's happening, McKee? Welcome. It's great to, you know, take a back seat to you and watch a real pro work. <laughs> well, is it it's got to be like that feeling where you're sitting in the back seat of your own car and you're yeah. like, "Wait, I've never done this." I mean, it, you know, it occasionally happened if like I got when really, you really like when you're really drunk and you have to have somebody yes. else drive your car. Yeah. So that's what yeah. That's exactly I mean, with Uber like. and Lyft, I feel like uh that doesn't happen as much anymore, but uh yeah. Or the old the uh the move that used to happen a lot. And this is again with Uber and Lyft, you probably don't have to do it that often, but you're at a company Christmas party, you get a little too hammered, whatever. There was a move where uh, you say your uh, car broke down, and if you had free towing, you would just get towed back to your place, <laughs> have the tow truck guy tow your car back to your place, you know, unhook the battery cable or whatever, claim that, it, and then. You know, just get a free ride uh, from the tow truck. Imagine company. trying to explain that to a millennial. They're like, what? You don't pull out your app? It's like, no, you <laughs> coerce a tow truck driver who, you know, maybe is in on it, maybe isn't. He doesn't give a shit. He's still getting that's paid. That's some true. That's some true DJ and shit right there. I'm impressed. <laughs> Hashtag Dejans only. That was like the. I feel like the hobo lift was just. <laughs> You know, if you had triple a, your friends would just be like, yeah, call, say your car's not working. What, what is he going to come out here and actually try to get it started? And back in the day, they would tow you like a hundred miles. Yeah, like now, now it's like five miles. As long as with, you're within your towing radius, it's a, a great little loophole joining us as well from the NBA gambling podcast, writer over at sports gambling podcast.com. Zach Bronner, Zach, we just knocked out the Eastern conference win totals podcast on the main uh, sports gambling podcast feed. So check that out. But now talking Western conference, is that how you decided you have, I feel like you have your Eastern conference team in the Knicks. You have a Western conference team in, in the nuggets. Do you only have two teams, right? I only have two teams and, and honestly the nuggets things only happen because of how pissed I get at the Knicks every year. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously I just, uh, kind of fell in love with uh, Nikola Jokic, uh, you know, the way he plays, the way he plays on the floor. So, uh, you know, uh, no need to clarify that. Uh, there's exactly. no, we're not going to judge love, whatever love you have for the Joker. Yeah, and, and, and in fairness, and, if, if you're a Knicks fan, like, and you haven't picked up a second team, it's because you're not watching basketball anymore. Yeah. I, at some point you can only punish yourself so much. I Zach still came real close to uh, Zach came, came real close to his uh, gambling nickname being baby Jokic. But then we decided <laughs> we couldn't both have baby in our, uh, in our gambling weird, nickname. So that's why he goes with Swiss bank now. Oh, oh like yeah. Swiss so I forgot, bank. I forgot to throw a Swiss bank in there. Ooh, Swiss that's, bank. That's fine. Don't worry about it, Sean. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, get that money Unload it from the Swiss bank account. Or if you've been holding on to Bitcoin, man, Bitcoin through the roof, perfect time to take it out of that unstable cryptocurrency market and put it in a huge growth opportunity over at my bookie.ag returns through the roof when you're picking the winners. And we give out a lot of winners, a couple losers here and there. But again, mybookie.ag, perfect place to cash in on all your NBA bets and all your bets in general. 
DGEN only prop bets. You can get them over at mybookie.ag. Live in game wager, mybookie.ag. Crazy player prop combinations that you can customize yourself. Mybookie.ag has you covered. And again, use that promo code SGP so they know we sent you. And so you can get that sweet, sweet 50% deposit bonus play win and get paid. Mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. Again, if you missed the Eastern Conference, we're going to be breaking it down from most win totals to least win totals as far as uh, what their number set at. We'll be throwing in the 82 game win total because it's a 72 game season. So if your brain is like ours and you can't do the math of what that would be like in a normal season, we'll do that math for you. Kicking things off, the LA Lakers sitting at a whopping 47 and a half, which would project to 54. Which I guess isn't I don't know as high in my head. I feel like some of these LeBron-led win totals have have touched around sixty, high fifties previously. But LeBron already signaling that he doesn't want to uh, start the season so soon. Does seem like he's going to be on a campaign to get Anthony Davis the MVP. I don't know this Lakers team with maybe fans are going to be able to show up towards the end of the season, so they'll be playing for home court. I don't know what's the, what's the handicap here, Zach, on the Lakers in the forty-seven and a half. Yeah, I like this under. I think you know, like you said, they're they're going to be fat and happy. They're coming off a ring that they still haven't had a parade for. You yeah. know, what what was that like a month ago? So they're still <laughs> they still feel like they're kind of celebrating that. LeBron obviously publicly opposed to to the season starting this early. He obviously does not seem, you know, at this age too. You know. Is he really going to push himself through this regular season where there might not even be home court in the playoffs? You know, keep that in mind too. If 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 the vaccine isn't all in order, you're also not going to have fans in, in venues for the playoffs either. So, I think they're going to really start slow here. Um, yeah, you know, they brought in Dennis Schroeder and Montrez Harrell to sort of run that second unit pick and roll, but you know, those types of marginal increases I don't think are going to get them over here. I, I think this is the year where they might be the third or fourth seed in the West, um, but still be your championship favorite. So I like this under here. McKee. Oh, I couldn't disagree more. Whoa. I got to say I was, you know, I was watching the Lakers beat up on my sons in preseason last <laughs> night and LeBron was out there playing and he looked good. Uh, I'm going to go over. Uh, I feel like they got rid of all their knuckleheads from J.R. Smith, Dion waiters, <laughs> Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee. And they went and added some real pros like Mark Gasol, Schroeder and uh, Montrez Harrell. I'm all about this Lakers going over. And uh, I saw moon off on our uh, NBA slack was also going over. So I feel good about that because uh, usually that guy wins. Kramer, what are you doing? Short, over under on LeBron. Sharp money. You know I love LeBron, and and as much as I wanted to come into this and play the they're not going to win enough games angle, and I don't love the championship future, but it feels like this this number is adjusted too far. And, and to your point, when you can lose the the likes of McGee, Howard, <laughs> like it, it's a who's who of who you don't want on your team to affect culture, and you raise the floor performance of your squad. Uh, and again, the last point, Anthony Davis to to win MVP. I don't know what those odds are, but it does seem like that might be a wise bet this year, especially because I would imagine his odds might be a little depressed because of guys like Kevin Durant, like being back in the real conversation. Yeah. So yeah, I think 47 and a half. I'm, I'm strangely taking the over on both of the highest win totals, which is very uh, counter uh, myself, not, not a contrarian move. So over on the Lakers, by the way, Sean, we live in Los Angeles. Yes. A, a city that is is like having good times right now. Two of the top basketball teams, a very good football team, one of the other struggling the other team, <laughs> and, and a championship baseball team, and yet n still, no one gives a shit about sports. no, no one. It's, you don't it's, see, un it's un fucking believable. You don't see people uh, rocking uh, much uh, championship gear. Uh, I'm gonna go under. It, I think it's it's the number feels a little low, but that being said, I don't know. Like this Lakers team is just smelling themselves so much. AD finally got that monkey off his back. But, but the guys who would be extra smelling themselves yeah. aren't on the team anymore. If that matters. Right, but I, I don't think those guys were getting a ton of minutes. And if you look at the minutes when LeBron was there and he wasn't, uh, that was a pretty huge fall off, as you'd expect. And really, I think Anthony Davis gets nicked up again. Like this guy just can't stay healthy. So I think LeBron's probably gonna be forced to play more than he wants to. 
Uh, there's some scheduled losses, I think, for this Lakers team. And the West is kind of tough, but it, it's pretty close. I'll lean, I'll lean under. This is not going to be one of my best. Quick bets. anecdote. One of the little ones uh, saw a picture of Anthony Davis. Of course, I'm trying to uh, give them the option of being an LA fan when it comes to some sports because I'm not going to push the Knicks on them. Uh, Asked why he doesn't do anything about that on his face. <laughs> was curious because she was she was certain there's ways to get that fixed. Oh yeah, it's his trademark. <laughs> He's the Frida Kahlo of the NBA. It's just funny when a kid's just like, "What the fuck's on your face?" <laughs> Clippers forty six and a half, which would turn into a fifty three win total in the regular season, plus eighteen hundred not to make the playoffs, plus six fifty to win the championship. Disappointing season. The got rid of Doc Rivers. It's all about Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and now Ty Lu. Interesting trio here, Zach. What's your lean on the Clippers? Yeah, I like this over. I think you know, like you said, a lot of bad vibes coming out of coming out of this Clippers team last year, late season in the playoffs. Everyone shitting on them with the, you know, admittedly hilarious pandemic P jokes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think this team they're going to hit the ground running from day one. This is a championship or bust season, you know, Kawhi Leonard's are going to be a free agent next summer if he wants to be. So they, they brought in Ty Lue to win a title this year. Um, I like the Serge Ibaka edition. I like the Luke Kennard edition. Um, Nick Batum is going to come in, possibly start for them. Uh, I think he's going to be a nice offensive connector to kind of build good, you know, ball movement on this offense. So I, I kind of like the Clippers as, as sort of being the Lakers of last year, really taking the regular season as seriously as you can with Kawhi Leonard on your team. Um, and this is my pick to win the, win the title this year. So um, wow. I like this, I like this over and uh, I think the Clippers are going to, you know, get back to where they were going into the bubble last year before everything went downhill. McKee, are you as high on the uh, Clippers as Zach? I'm not quite as high as he is, but I do like them to also go over. I have them slotted behind the Lakers still, but still going over that win total. Uh, I agree. I, th I think it's going to be a bounce back year for Kawhi and Paul George. Uh, we forget that Paul George, when he was in OKC, people were thinking of him as an outside MVP candidate. And uh, Kawhi, when he pushed his way out of San Antonio, everybody was shitting on him. And he came back in Toronto and w just won the championship. No big deal. So uh, I do like them to bounce back this year. Kramer. Yeah, I mean it, it's tough because I think we're gonna have uh, you know load management's gonna pop its head up in different ways. Contact tracing, like. I I think Kawhi is going to get super creative on ways to not play regular <laughs> season basketball games. But again, I, I think I came in expecting to be fading both Los Angeles teams, but I don't, I think they adjusted the numbers too much already. And, and to, to the point of they had guys miss games last year and they still paced for 55 wins. So uh, I'm going to take the over. Yeah. I'm also going over. I, I kind of like the uh, narrative of them having a little chip on their shoulder. I, I think if anyone's going to be motivated in the regular season, I think it could be the Clippers team. Obviously, a little worried about Kawhi and his load management, but I think Paul George feels like he, I don't know, feels like he's kind of tired of people <laughs> shitting on him. And he's he's a good player. I, I think he's going to be fired up. I like some of the guys they brought in. So I'm going over here and and feel pretty decent about it. Next up, Denver Nuggets, 43 and a half, adjust to 49 and a half. In a regular season, plus six hundred not to make the playoffs, minus one thousand to make the playoffs. Nuggets have been, you know, hanging around. They actually hit the over on their win totals every season under Mike Malone, except last year, which obviously kind of a weird year and uh, did a little damage there in the playoffs. Zach, where are you at with the Nuggets? Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt. Just one thing about about the Clippers. Uh, the NBA has issued a, a new set of load management guidelines this year that have ramped up the fine schedule Ooh. and like required you to have a legitimate injury in order to sit <laughs> out, especially on national what TV a fucking games. league. <laughs> so, so I, I, while I do think there will be ways around it uh, and teams will obviously figure that out as the year goes along. I do think the environment for just blatantly resting guys is going to be a little bit, you know, it's going to be a little bit tougher to do that. So that might affect some things getting back to the nuggets. Obviously I'm going over here. Um, super deep team. They've looked really, really nice in the preseason offensively. Um, and yeah, Jamal Murray is going to, I think, solidify the leap that he took in the, in the playoffs last year and become a, a star point guard for this team. Jokic, he's actually skinny to start a season for the first time in, in his entire career. Usually he comes in chubby and then sheds the weight over the first couple months. He's still skinny, you know, from the bubble. So 
I think they're going to hit the ground running. I think Jokic is a sneaky MVP candidate. Um, I think I think the Nuggets go over. I think they have a nice regular season again. I mean, their their total brings you south of fifty, right? I I think it's a no brainer. I'm I'm chalky early in this. Yeah, you're you're liking all the good teams. Hot take there, Kramer. (laughs) I'm with you guys. I'm you know I'm always a sucker for uh, the Nuggets team. Maybe it's a Porter Junior breakout year again. Just well coached, well put together. Uh, you know, I, I like that Jokic is in shape. That's a great angle. I mean, I, I think that maybe was why they got off, uh, had some issues there. But yeah, this Nuggets team is just solid. There's got to be a handicap here around like holidays being different and some of these guys coming <laughs> into shape. You know, it's, I don't know. I uh, got to say, uh, I think you guys are all wrong. Nice. No, oh, I'm really? going under on this. Uh, a little factoid I saw is uh, Denver's scoring margin was fifth in the West two years ago and sixth last season. I think they'll regress to the mean and lose a few more games this season. I still think there could be a great uh, playoff team, but I think that they will slightly go under that win total. And I still just don't think that Michael Porter jr. Is quite clicking with that unit. Uh, he still seems a bit like a knucklehead and losing Jeremy grant is going to uh, mean a few more losses than normal. Yeah, that grant loss uh, could end up hurting them a little bit. So that's a good angle. Mavs, they're sitting at 42 and a half, adjusted to 48 and a half for a regular season. Minus 600, yes to make the playoffs. Plus 400, no. Plus 1800 on the NBA championship. There's some Luka buzz, possible MVP. This is a, a fun nugget. Carlisle, six and one on the Mavs over win total. If the over is set at over uh, um, 500. So he's a guy that. <coughs> I mean, even when you have expectations, he exceeds them. Uh, Doncic Mc- is the favorite to win the MVP over at my bookie. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, McKee, where are you at with this Mavs team right now? Uh, you know what? I'm going the other way with this Mavs team. While I'm excited about Luca, I do think that they really overperformed ex- expectations last season. I think they might come back down to earth. I think that loss of Seth Curry is going to hurt them a little more than they think with the three per- percentage because Josh Richardson showed in. Philadelphia that he cannot hit a three. He's great on defense, but I don't know. I think that they're um, and the, that and Christoph Pazingas is going to miss a lot of games again with injuries. I'm going to go slightly under. I still think that Luca is a legit MVP candidate, but that still doesn't mean that they'll go over that win total. Yeah, KP already dealing with some injury stuff. Zach, where are you at with this Mavs team? Yeah, very, very similar to McKee. You know, seeing Luca as a favorite for MVP just kind of shows you where the where the group think out there is on this team. I think they're, they're ready to be faded, you know, right away. I mean, people think that they, 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 this roster didn't get that much better. And Porzingis is hurt now, you know, no one knows when he's going to come back. He's dealing with chronic issues. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's no real second star on this team. Uh, you know, Luca is obviously great, but I don't think he's ready for this type of burden on his, on his own shoulders. So going under on the maths, the Knicks do what they were doing, shipping that bum Porzingis out of town <laughs> under yeah, I mean, it just seems like a public team, especially like early season betting. Probably good opportunities to fade the Mavericks. Yeah, I mean, normally I like uh, Carlisle. I, I laid that nugget out there, but they just feel too chalky, too much heat right. on this Mavs team. And Come on, Sean, he's a he's a locker stuffing coach. He's a yeah. he's a total nerd. What are you doing? And like it's him. and it's just always fun to fade Dallas. So I, I'm with you guys <laughs> on the under. Utah Jazz sitting at 42 and a half, but they're to. Uh, Make the playoffs minus 300. 42 and a half converts to 48 and a half. Minus 300 to make it. Uh, plus 200 not to make it. Uh, 4,000. So uh, 40 to 1 to make the, or sorry, to win the NBA championship. Crazy. They have the same win total as the Mavs, but big difference in the championship pricing. For me, uh, Utah, they kind of had a year from hell last year, of course, starting with the uh, COVID outbreak that kind of shut down. Sports and and shut down the uh, NBA in general. I, I don't know where are you at with this uh, Jazz team, Zach. Yeah, I'm I'm all over this over. This is a, this is my first lock from the Western Conference. Actually, um, I think they're kind of the ultimate post hype sleeper here. I mean, th- this was a team coming into last year. People thought might be the best team in the West with with the Mike Conley addition um, and, and the Bogdanovich addition. Um, Mike Conley kind of struggled to fit in at first. But then this team started playing like one of the best teams in the NBA after he sort of coalesced. Then you have the, you know, like you said, year from hell with the COVID issues, Bogdanovich missing the bubble, chemistry issues between Gobert and uh, Mitchell. That seems to be smoothed over. I think this team's going to 
hit the ground running. Um, and yeah, like I said, just the ultimate post hype sleeper. I mean, everyone kind of hates this team uh, because of what happened with Gobert and Mitchell, but um, I'm going to go over and if you have the stomach for it, minus 300 to make the playoffs, I think is a lock. And I, I could, I could potentially see them, uh, you know, factoring into that championship picture. So yeah, you over do, here, you do feel like they could suffer a, a, an injury to one of their star guys and still get into the playoffs. Well, coach team McKee, where are you at with this uh, jazz team? I agree with everything that Zach said. Uh, growing up a Phoenix Suns fan, I learned to really hate the Utah Jazz with a deep, deep <laughs> passion. I wanted to go under on this team, but as I started digging into the numbers, I agree. You know, they underperformed in the bubble, but they were just a three pointer away from. Uh, knocking out the nuggets and moving on. I don't think that we would be viewing them the same way had that three pointer gone in. So uh, I like them to go over. I think they've, uh, I, I agree with Zach. They're a good post hype sleeper. Yeah, no, I mean that, that was kind of my angle. They had that year from hell last year. And then this year it seems like people have moved the uh, sleeper heat onto the Mavs and they're kind of flying under the radar, even though they have the same win total, it, it just feels like they're a pretty consistent team well coached, well put together. I, I'm with you guys. I, I really like the over here. 30, 33 and nine against bad teams. Again, yeah. like to, to get to a win total like this, you're going to have to take care of business when business needs to be taken care of. I, I love the minus 300. I'm, I'm lockstep with Zach. I think this is a lot. This is lock worthy. Get the lock out. Oh, you know where you can find plenty of locks over at better than dot Vegas, essentially YouTube for sports gambling. We got our own page over there own SGPN page. You can search for it over on better than dot Vegas, or you can just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. See all our uh, video picks. Get to see all the smiling, bright, super attractive uh, people, including myself and Kramer giving yep. out stone cold locks. Sean, I was told last week I threw out a video. People got lost in my eyes. <laughs> Maybe I was too intense. I don't know. Someone did say uh, th <laughs> this is the photo they would use before you go on some sort of rampage. <laughs> you did it. You did have that vibe. And I, I could see a, a neighbor just saying, you know, Mr. Kramer is a guy kept to himself. It's called eye contact. Sean. <laughs> Look like you're trying to fight the camera again. Check out Kramer's picks, my picks, bunch of uh, guys from SGPN, sports gambling podcast.com slash BTV. Better than Vegas. Check it out. Free. It's all free. Picks are free. Everything's free, baby. It's free. It's for me. Better than dot Vegas. Portland Trailblazers. 40 and a half is their win total, just a 46. Minus 200 on uh to make the playoffs. Plus 160 not to make it. McKee, I'll let you uh, kick things off on this Portland team. What's your, what's your feel for the blazers? I like a lot of the additions they made with Robert Covington uh, Ennis Cantor played well for them two years ago when uh, Nurkic went out, he played well for them in the playoffs when they made it to the Western conference finals. So they brought him back in. Uh, they added uh, Derek Jones jr. And Harry Giles, both good players. However, I just think this West he, this Western conference is going to be a little too tight for them to get over that 41 wins to do the over. So I have them right at 40 wins. So just under, but I consider that a stay away. Yeah. Zach, where are you at with the blazers? Yeah. I also like this under, I think they, they, they're catching a lot of hype because of the Covington edition and the kind of that, that all out sprint they went on in the bubble last year to sort of make it into that, into that playing game against Memphis. But, you know, as we saw against the Lakers, they completely ran out of gas. That level of play was not sustainable. I think they're catching a lot of hype right now. Um, and as we talk about the Suns and the Warriors after this, I think I would have those teams both slotted to get ahead of this Portland team. So I'll go under as well. Kramer? Well, let's just say this I cannot confirm or deny any of this. But let's just say a certain superstar on the Portland Trailblazers has been spending a lot of time with a new music video advertising campaign <laughs> to let you know that someone has live sports. So I don't know <laughs> if his focus is on the court. Let's go under. Uh, I like, I like where your guys heads at. I well it worked for Baker Mayfield and it's going to work uh, possibly Sunday night against the New York giants. Ryan, oh, what, what's that got to do with this, this is the <laughs> NBA Sean. I, you know what? And Zach kind of hit on it. They went on this crazy run just to get into that play in game, just to get into the playoffs. It's like, well, what happened to the, that play that sent you into that tailspin? 
I mean, I love CJ McCollum. I love how he gutted it out and what we saw from him. And I hate going against my boy CJ McCollum. After all, I don't know if you guys know, but Lehigh beat Duke, <laughs> and uh, you know, forever he's he's Hall of Fame for me Go. just for just for beating the shit out of Duke in the uh, in the NCAA championship. Uh, even though I lost money on that, <laughs> uh, I'm with you guys though. Under this this team is just I don't know they're they're getting a little too much hype and they just kind of disappoint. Like we know who the Blazers are, they're not quite there. I think in a regular season they're just not a 47 win team and that's kind of how the math would shake out. So, I'm with you guys on the under. The Phoenix Suns win total sitting at 39 and a half adjusted to 45. Yes, minus 160 to make the playoffs, plus 120 on the no. McKee, talk us into your Suns. Are you are you drinking the Suns Kool-Aid? Are you going over? They got CP3. What could go wrong here down in Hell Phoenix? Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm going over, man. I'm all in on drinking the Kool Aid. I think that uh, CP3 hasn't had a season under 60% win percentage in like the last 10 years or something like that. So I put them right at 60%, which would uh, put the win total at 43, well over the 39 and a half. I think that Devin Booker has another level to go to. As I've mentioned on this podcast before, uh, he's had five head coaches in his first five seasons. This is the first time that he has a head coach really carrying over to the second year. So he has some continuity with uh, Monty Williams, who seems like a really good head coach. They have a good bond. He's uh, taken uh, him to the next level where he's not just a scoring threat, but he's also a, a team winning threat. Um, DeAndre Ayton, he's going to be great in the pick and roll with CP3. I like the over all the way. Yeah, no, good point about eight and Zach, are you uh are you drinking the uh Suns Kool Aid as well? Yeah, I like this over a lot. Uh, I think they, they they obviously made some nice additions, got a lot of depth, and I think will be interesting to see how CP three kind of gets along with with the training staff in Phoenix. Uh <laughs> he he clearly I mean he played he was in the top twenty in minutes in the NBA last year in OKC despite the sort of washed up narrative. So I, I think the sun sort of needs something similar to him. I mean, he's kind of going to be the key, the start the straw that stirs the drink, if you will. And Phoenix, um, I like this over. I think they are a playoff team, um, but you know, losing, losing one of these core pieces to injury could be disastrous for this team. You CP three last time he had a losing record uh, in the NBA was 2009. And you know, he did a pretty good job with Vinny Del Negro kind of bringing in these young guys you know, they never were able to put it together with uh, Blake and Deandre Jordan, but I thought he did as far as just like wins and especially regular season wins. He did a good job, you know, keeping the young guys in line and you need, when you have a bunch of young millennial types, right? And you need an old school vet cracking the whip, keeping Uh, these guys eye on the prize. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I like. I think minus 160 to make the playoffs lock that up. And I mean, that feels really good. And uh, if you like that, you like the over as well. I mean, maybe the number got pushed up a little too high because of that eight no run they had in the bubble. Which they should, if that if that ever happens again, which hopefully it wouldn't. I don't even know how it would. But if you go undefeated, you should just stay out there until you lose a game. It feel, feels like make it take it. A uh, couple points. I brought some actual nuggets to impress uh, Mr. McKee over oh, here. Oh, nice. Uh, they actually uh, another team actual win percentage last year forty six point six percent. The Pythag win percentage had them close to five ten. So big difference there. Expect the regression. <laughs> a couple other things. They were four and eight in close games decided by three points or less regression. And last thing I'll say, Chris Paul uh, coming to this team is going to surely help them beat teams that they should beat last year. They struggled in those situations, only 20 and 18 versus teams under 500. So yeah, I think this is a no brainer. Another one that I think it's going to be hard for me to not lock this up. And yeah, why, why is their playoff price? Only minus 160. easy money. Chris Paul's making the fucking play. You see how hard that guy works <laughs> fucking hates losing golden state warriors, 37 and a half adjust to 43. <laughs> Championship twenty-two to one. Of course, the Clay Thompson ACL that really uh, kind of set back the expectations. Zach, are you over under on the Warriors this year? Yeah, we talked about me and Key talked about this uh, a couple of days ago. Just super high upside, super high downside, uh, with a lot of variability with this team. Uh, I'll take them over. I mean, Steph looks healthy right now, and Draymond apparently is bought in right now. Obviously, he's coming off a case of COVID. Um, but yeah, I think I think they're they. Hopefully, with, with Steph healthy, I think they should be a playoff team. 
I like I like Kelly Oubre. I like Andrew Wiggins. They do have, they do have a lot of depth on this team. They have a nice second unit uh, built around you know Kent Bazemore, Marquise Chris, Brad Wanamaker. Sneaky nice pieces on the second unit. So I'll take this over. Uh, I, I think I, I would put them. I would put them and the Suns both above the Blazers here uh, in in this little mid tier in the bottom of the bottom of the playoff race. McKee Warriors, where are you at? Well, I agree with Zach that they have a super high upside and a super uh, low downside. I am going to lean towards the downside. I think losing Clay is too big of a deal. In the four games that uh, they played with Steph Curry last season, they were one in four. Uh, so I don't think the stuff can do it without clay to that degree. So I'm going to go a uh, slight under here Kramer. So if I'm correct, this, uh, this number adjusted like six wins or something like that. Close to six wins. Yeah. Uh, With the clay Thompson news. is clay Thompson really worth that many wins. I guess that's the question. And I think uh, the contrarian me is going to fade that line movement and give me the over. Yeah, I'm also on the over. I think uh, I mean Bazemore is not a complete asshat, right? Like they're they're like they're gonna get something out. Ubre, not a complete, you know, useless pile of trash. So I think to move a number six and a half wins or whatever they did, probably too much. And I think if anyone, Wiggins, Wiggins and Uber have never been on winning teams, guys. So I don't know why well, we think I, they're such good pieces. I'm gonna say I'm optimistic that Steve Kerr can untap. Andrew Wiggins potential. I'm sorry. Are you talking about Canadian LeBron James? <laughs> uh, that's that's the name I go by. <laughs> it's going to be called Canadian Bacon. He's going to be cooking. Houston Rockets. <laughs> so I'm on the over as well. 35 and a half. Of course, uh, we'll see what uh, Fat Harden ends up doing, um, and, and whether or not he gets traded. Really, just kind of a nightmare. I'm going the under here. I, I don't know how you could take the over on this Rockets because that adjusts to 40 and a half and. It seems like the Harden trade is imminent. They they kind of seem like they're blowing things up. I mean, they asked uh, Harden what he thought of the new GM compared to Daryl Morey, and he said he hadn't talked to him yet. So it seems like a problem. <laughs> that seems like someone who's not going to be hanging around there. McKee, any way you can take the over on the Rockets right now? Actually, yeah, I do think you can take the over on them. I wouldn't like, it. but I I wouldn't bet it. But I am going to take the over. I tried to talk myself into the under, but I just. Uh, went ahead with their win with their uh, win percentage from last season. And if they have James Harden for 36 games, half of the half of the season, they'll still win enough games. Even if they fall to below 500, when he leaves, they'd still pass this uh, number. So I'm going to go over, but again, wouldn't bet it. Yeah. It feels like a stay away right now. Zach, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, as McKee said, if they if they keep Harden, this goes over. I mean, he's he's that good. And and if they and if they trade him, I think it does go under. I think another thing to keep in mind if they do trade him, I think they probably clean house. So guys like PJ Tucker and Eric Gordon that are kind of their support pieces would also be gone. Um and yeah, I mean, look, this situation seems somewhat untenable um with, you know, the strip club incident with Vegas and Atlanta <laughs> and the and the the overweight uh nature that he that he showed up in and the press conference he had. So <laughs> yes, I, I, I commend the rockets and their front office for their ability to, you know, withstand this uncomfortableness right now, but you got to think he's out of there sooner rather than later. So I'll, I'll go under here. Um, and I expect James Harden to be traded relatively soon. Kramer. Yeah, you got to, I mean, God damn. I, th- whenever I, I, in preparing for this podcast, every time I read load management, I just thought about that picture <laughs> of Harden looking fat as shit. Just, I mean, I, honestly, Sean, like he, he looks like he, he looks like he's a sixth man, like on a rec league team. Like he's not even <laughs> starting. He's just, he clearly doesn't take it that seriously. Not doing his sit-ups, not hitting soul cycle. That's close. So I, I'm sure, I don't know what he's doing, but man, yeah, you just gotta bet on the fact that this team, regardless if they trade him, they, they, they you know, there's Maybe some, there's Hart, some Hart, shit in the water. Hart you know could I mean? be the one guy who's actually going to the strip club for the wings. <laughs> Wherever everyone was given uh, uh, a dining still open. L- there. Everyone was giving Lou Williams <laughs> shit about oh oh he claims he was going to Magic City just for the wings. I think uh, James Harden actually was going to Magic City just for the wings. New Orleans Pelicans thirty five and a half is the win total. They got Stan Van Gundy now. Uh, Steve and Gundy seven and five previously on win totals. Zach, are you buying into the SVG hype? No, I'm not. I'm, there's, I'm, not I'm really, there's not really hype. I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of Zion hype. I, I do yes. think there is. They obviously came out in the bubble. Um, 
looked bad. And I, I expect a little bit more of that this year. I think, I think they, uh, I don't necessarily love the the pieces that they put around Zion. I think I would like a little more space around him, obviously with uh, Steven Adams now kind of clogging up a lot of the lane Lonzo ball. He's a sketchy shooter. Um, jo- they're starting Josh Hart now instead of JJ Reddick. So I think this offense is not going to be as good as people think it is. Um, and, and in general, I, I just want to fade th- this new Orleans. You know, I think they're catching a little bit they're, they're, I don't think they're better than Memphis or San Antonio uh, as, as you kind of move down this list here. So I'll go under and I expect kind of a, troublesome first year for Stan van in, uh, in new Orleans. Yeah. Sketchy shooter. That was the same uh, profile I had for the rec league basketball team. <laughs> McKee, what are you doing here? 35 and a half, basically, you know, do you think the Pelicans can be over or under 500 this season? I don't think so. I think that total is just a little too high. I'm, I agree with all the things that Zach said. I think that uh, this team is young. I think they could be real good in the latter part of the season when Stan Van Gundy figures out that this is a team that just needs to run and play full court. But I think he's going to go traditional, try to do this like half court offense, like really slow it down. And I think they're going to lose a lot of games early on and they're not going to get the over. And, you know, I, not something I'm looking for when I know that I have a player that needs to focus on their fitness is a coach that should clearly does not put fitness <laughs> first. So uh, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm lockstep with everyone else here. I'm going to take the under and, and candidly, like I'm still in the camp of like Zion's going to show me something. Yeah. I mean, I, there's certainly been some fun moments from Zion, Maybe but I'm I, just a hater. I, I think know. the Pelicans kind of showed you their hand leading up, you know, in that bubble run to the playoffs, they, the NBA did everything they yeah. could to try and get the Pelicans in the playoffs and yeah. they still figured out a way not to get in there. That to me is kind of who this team is. Now, maybe SVG comes in there and eventually figures things out for them. But I think with how competitive the West is, I, I think it's going to be a little bumpy transition, especially early before we get to the uh, Grizzlies. They're up next shout out to thrive fantasy, thrive fantasy DFS. But DFS with player props, that re- that's right. Player props over under, same way we're doing over under win totals. You can do over under for player props. They got a ton of games coming for NBA, NBA opening night, Christmas Day. There's going to be so many uh, fun ways to get down on NBA gambling action over at thrivefantasy.com. NBA gambling podcast guys are going to be giving out some Thrive Fantasy lineups to help you win some cold, hard cash. Very easy to uh, deposit withdrawal. They got PayPal going, and you get that sweet deposit bonus. Use the promo code SGP. Fifty dollar deposit match instantly. That's right, instant. Fifty bucks, a free fifty dollars. It's free. It's for me, and it is over at ThriveFantasy.com. When you use the promo code SGP, Memphis Grizzlies thirty and a half. That would adjust to thirty five plus one ninety to make the playoffs, minus two thirty to miss. Zach, what are we doing with the Grizzlies? Yeah, I, I got to go over here. I, we, me, 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 McKee discussed one at length on Tuesday. Um, you know, I think a lot of people expect this team to maybe take a step backwards. Um, they kind of snuck their way into the playoff picture last year. Now, Jaron Jackson dealing with injuries, Justice Winslow dealing with injuries. That's two starters down to start the season. Um, but John Moran looks like a man on a mission. Um, they have a lot of nice support pieces that fit him well and fit this system well. Taylor Jenkins, you know, looks like a really good coach who's kind of instilled his vision on this Memphis team. So yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily love this team to make the playoffs, but you know, are they going to be seven, eight games below 500? I I don't think so. So um, I I like this over here. Yeah. And and this is the team that could maybe benefit from, uh, you know, having a, a smaller schedule as far as not having to play so many conference games. And uh, I think I'm with you on the over there with the Grizzlies laid out a good case there. And as an avid NBA gambling podcast listener, you know, you guys are all in, I'm all in McKee. Are you uh, I'm assuming you're on the uh, Grizzlies as well here, right? Yeah. I think that uh, this number is too low. I think that the, everybody talking about them taking a step back this year after they overperformed last year, set this number a little too low. Um, I agreed. John Morant is on a mission. I think that they are going to be right around 500, which is well over this number. His mission to get 31 wins in the cash, the over ticket Kramer, are you making it a clean sweep? Or are you dissenting? I'm dissenting. 
Uh, they they had a very good January, getting eleven of their wins. In, yeah, in that, that was that was one nugget I saw. It was kind of like, it, was it just that peak January we so carried them with the expectation of normalization plus some of the concerns that you guys actually threw out. I'm gonna lean under here. Oh, the contrarian. I and like I, it. I, yeah, I mean maybe maybe the uh, the the better angle here. It, I was gonna say for you guys taking the over. Maybe the better angle is to take that plus one ninety, make the playoffs. Oh, yeah, you're right. That that probably is the. Maybe if you like the them to have a good year, San Antonio Spurs twenty nine and a half is the win total, which would adjust to thirty three and a half plus three fifty to make the playoffs. I may sprinkle a little bit on that because <coughs> give me Bre- give me Greg Popovich with a team that no one believes in. You know, last year they didn't go over the win total. I think it was a little bit inflated, but now everyone thinks the Spurs suck. But in this season, I, I think Pop, he's gonna get the best out of his talent, like he does historically. 14 and 4 on the over for season win totals. And yeah, I mean, granted, some of that was with some Hall of Famers, but this number is just adjusted way too low for a guy who's this good at coaching basketball. Zach, am I making it too simple there? No, I totally agree with everything you said. I and you guys stole my thunder. I, I like this plus three fifty to make the playoffs. Um, you know, I and you even look at their game less than Minnesota. I mean, then Memphis part of me, but look at that nice odds uh, to make the playoffs here. Popovich, great coach. I, I see this as the Charlotte Hornets of the West uh, or maybe, <laughs> maybe vice versa. Um, but yeah, I like this over, over 29 and a half and yes, to make the playoffs. McKee, are you, are you uh, joining us on team pop? Yeah, this is actually a best bet of mine. Um, gambling engineer, when he was on last week, threw this out as his lock. I am in total agreement with him. They they have to win 41% of their games to go over this. Uh, last season, they won 45% of their games, and Pop has a lifetime winning percentage of over 67%. It's <laughs> insane. So I think they uh, they fly past this. It's too low. Yeah, and it feels like they had some time to figure out who this team is a little bit, at least in Pop's mind. Kramer, I know they didn't have the talent that they normally do, but are you over on 29 and a half wins over? I think the big regression element is the defense. They're not going to be a bottom 10 defense again. Yeah. That's something I think they can coach up and and get fixed here, or at least fixed enough that you can again, 41% or whatever it ends up being. That's so low T wolves, 28 and a half is their win total. That adjusted 32 and a half plus three fifty to make the playoffs uh, 150 to one to win it all. I, I, I think this. T Wolves team could end up being the worst team in the West. I mean, also, you know, Carl Anthony Towns lost a bunch of family members. I mean, you know, you hate to throw this into the handicapping, but if if they have any sort of issues, maybe he opts out late. I, I don't know. There's just a lot going on. And mentally, that's got to be tough for you as a player to deal with that kind of going into a season. And I, I'm just not crazy about their team in general. This feels even high. And I think the I think the West is going to end up picking on this T Wolves team. Zach, where are you at with the T Wolves? Yeah, total lockstep with you again, Sean. I like this under a lot. You know, this defense is going to suck. They 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 don't really have any any two way players on this team. They kind of have the option to go all offense or the option to go all defense. Um, and either way, the upside of neither of those iterations are that high. Um, you know, I think they're, they're, they have a solid culture. Um, I, I I'm a fan of of the T Wolves culture, but yeah, n- not a fan of D'Angelo Russell as as a star to build around. So under here. Um, and yeah, significant downside to be the worst team in the conference. McKee, are you, are you uh, any, yeah, any you upside on the T wolves that we're missing? Nope. No, I'd lock in this under, you know, Zach threw this out there. I get last season that he liked the cult, the culture that Ryan young coach, <laughs> Ryan Sanders was bringing. And we saw what that culture <laughs> brought one of the worst records in the NBA. <laughs> they went out and they got D'Angelo Russell just to make cat happy. Not because it's a great fit. Uh, I don't like the lineup. And I think that the West is just going to feast on them. Look, I've learned one thing over the years in my gambling manifesto. It will state no matter how optimistic it appears to be fade the T wolves. I, I, I just can't. Yeah. Got to take the under. I, I want the, nothing yeah. to do with the situation. Russell is a, a homeless man's Westbrook. Yeah. They perpetually just never figure it out. All right. Sacramento Kings, 28 and a half, the just the 32 and a half. I'll get this going. Luke Walton. Uh, no, I'm out on Luke Walton and they seem like a great candidate. That's really invested in tanking. I think it'll be them and the T wolves battling it out for the worst in the West. I just don't see anything that, you know, 33 wins in an 82 game season is still 
pretty high. I mean, it's not uncommon to see teams in the high teens, mid twenties. And I think, you know, in an 82 game season, that would be the Kings here. McKee, are you uh, any hope in uh, Sac city? Uh, I think there is a little bit of hope in Sac city of the total this low. I, I wouldn't bet it. I pick this as a stay away, but I will say over just because I think the fact that they got rid of Bogdan Bogdanovich is actually going to help them with their buddy healed issues. Mm. Uh, De'Aaron Fox and buddy healed show that they were a great back court and De'Aaron Fox's rookie year. I think they can get back to there without the log jam at uh, the two guard. Makes sense. Zach, are you, uh, are you over or under here on the Kings? Yeah, I think I'm over as well. Um, you know, definitely not a good team by any means, but all the sort of noise out of Sacramento right now is that they want to compete this year, uh, even sort of trying to, you know, limit the role of some of their young players to sort of help them get to that point. I know Marvin Bagley has talked about wanting to take on more of a load and they're trying to limit him to make him a quote unquote winning player um, <laughs> for, for, for this season. So uh, I'll go with a slight over here, but yeah, I, I don't think, it, I don't think it's going to be a pretty season for Sacramento by any means. Kramer, a little split here on the Kings. Where are you are you gonna cast a deciding vote? No, <laughs> I'm not gonna take. I'm gonna take the under on the Queens, as we call them. <laughs> Remember when LA hated the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, that was fun. They called them the Shaq called them the Queens. Yeah, that was. Uh, Couldn't say that today, Sean. Kinda, yeah, I mean, probably that's, a full apology. That's empowering. It'd be like, yes, Queens. It's probably on the same level as eating sushi off a a, a, a naked model <laughs> in a reality TV show. Apologize for the lack of that. Was the the best part about that story about the UNLV quarterback who apologized. It's it. The guy's in Vegas. Yeah. Like that that is probably the tamest the thing worst thing he's done. That happens in Vegas. Last team in the West, OKC Thunder, 22 and a half is the win total. That is just out to 25 and a half. Uh plus 1800, which is insane to make the playoffs uh, for me. I'm going over here again. It's nothing you know, I I wouldn't play any of these uh make the playoffs or uh, bets, but I mean, there's six below wins in, in the uh, versus the Kings in this shortened season. That seems like a crazy adjustment there. And again, I think there's a little relief from the city. Hey, we got rid of, uh, you know, we got rid of pain in the ass, Russell Westbrook. Maybe the young guys win some games. They shouldn't. I, I don't know. I, I'm just going over here because of the overall formula. I'm not super high on the team in any way, but a 22 and a half just seems too low for any team. Really? Zach, where are you at? Yeah, I'm going over as well. Um, don't necessarily have any good reason, but this is a competent organization. Um, Shea Gildas, Alexander, Al Horford, you know, two sneak, like not that bad pieces that you'd expect for the worst team in the NBA. So they'll be bad, but they might win 23 games. McKee, is that uh, too low or too high you. on the Thunder? Well, I disagree, man. I, I agree that this win total is pretty low, but they got rid of Chris <laughs> Paul. They're a year away from Russell Westbrook. I don't even know why you threw that one out there. That's the true. Uh, it's still, um, it's still bothering them. <laughs> the, Danilo Gallinari got rid Houston. of him. <laughs> they really overperformed last year. Their win total was very low last year, and they because everybody was expecting them to trade Chris Paul away, they didn't. Um, so I, I think they kind of regress this year and uh, have a record more along the lines of what the warriors did last season. So I have them under, yeah, the case for them to end up in Uber tank mode. Uh, now aren't that they, they sellers, like, isn't that the problem? Aren't, aren't some of these pieces that uh, are going to, going to be trade? Like, isn't this an organization that's just going to roll it out? That's true. But draft, also it's like, so I, I mean, can they take on more picks at some point? It's like, they have so many fucking picks right now. Yeah, you're right. They probably are a seller, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it, the numbers seem to. It's more against the number than the team for me. Yeah, I, I'm with you, uh, but I, I'm I'm more with McKee and the Ryan's are going to stick together here. I'm taking the under, and I I just I just think this team has zero fucks to give about this season. Solid, solid angle. All right, we're going to give out our two locks here. Before we do that, shout out to Ace per head, of course. If you think of starting up your own online sports book, Ace is the place to do it. Just go to aceperhead.com/sgp. Get up to six weeks free. That's right, six weeks of their amazing sportsbook software. Kramer, kick things off. Who are your uh, two locks? Uh, well, I'm going to lock up the Utah over. Uh, talked about that a little bit earlier. Really, really like that one. And uh, you know what? I'm going to come. I'm, I'm going to just stick to that same range. I thought it was going to go a different direction, but the more I listened, 
the more I love this Portland angle, I'm going to take the under. And like I said, I may or may not have information that uh, a super <laughs> certain superstar has been spending some time off the court. Uh, so uh, over on Utah under on Portland and I'm with you guys. Like why not throw a, throw a dart with the uh, San Antonio Spurs to, to make the playoffs. Zach, what are your, what are your two favorites here? <laughs> Two favorites. I'll probably go Utah over, and I will go Clippers over. Um, oh, as as well as that Ooh. San Antonio dart throw. Um, like but yeah, it. Clippers over Utah over. Like it, McKee. What are you doing? Two favorite. I am gonna lock it in with the uh, Spurs over twenty nine and a half. I think that um, it's not a dart throw. It's it's much more of a lock than than making the playoffs. But I uh, I like that one, and I like the Timberwolves under. I think that there's no way they're good this year. Oh man, yeah, I'm. That's I'm, a good lock. I, I'm locking up this Spurs. I mean, the the pop narrative is just too strong, even for a uh, square gentleman like myself. And I think I'm just gonna roll the dice and think James Harden gets traded. You don't you don't <laughs> intentionally get that fat unless you know you're losing your job. Uh, Houston Rockets under that feels uh, really good for me. Lock that up. And again, you're listening to the NBA Gambling Podcast. Make sure you subscribe toss the guys a five-star rating and review. And if you want to check out the Eastern conference final or uh, win totals, you can check it out over on the sports gambling podcast feed. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Crazy basketball's back. It is. It's back. It's here. Mybookie.ag promo code SGP for the NBA and sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is Ryan. Good luck everyone. Kramer. Let it ride. <laughs>